back in the arms of the law, a miserable Steve Collett was in the fight of his life. God was a shouting and Satan was killing you. And who in the God's world can I talk to? Mom, she used to, she would always say when I get locked up that the Lord answered her prayer. And I'd say, well, Mom, you know, you probably need to quit praying. Landing at the Clay County Detention Center, Steve shuffled into a chapel service to swap dope with fellow inmates. There's a pastor talking one night about how big God was. And as stupid as I was, I was in the back of the crowd and I said, if he's so big, I'd like to see him try me. When jail chaplain Eddie Frazier got home that night, he was nearly speechless. He just had this, oh my gosh, look on his face. He said, I just met a man. I don't believe there's any hope for. Steve was a walking powder keg, and it didn't take much to provoke an explosion of violence. The inevitable outcome of these episodes was a stint in a cold, isolated cell that inmates call the hole. He'd been a pretty bad boy, apparently. In an attempt to calm their rebellious inmate, jail officials asked a visiting chaplain to call on Steve. He didn't want me there, you know. He, he would go to the bathroom to avoid me. You can't hide in there. They ain't nowhere to hide. If you went and got on the commode, he would find you. And he would wait till you got done. So you can't sit on the commode all day. So uh, just get up and see what this man wants. And at that point in my life, I'd, I've lost my kids. I've lost it all again. And I don't care if I live or die. Yeah, when I get out, I do. And if I don't, I don't. So, I mean, I just, I'd lost all hope of, li of any kind of life. After being sent on to the detention facility in neighboring Laurel County, Steve served out his term and was released on January 13, 2004. But like most chapters in the college story, the plot line was not that simple. There were holders for outstanding warrants in Tennessee, and by all rights, he should not be set loose. Steve was suspicious. There's a cruiser's lights headed, pointed right down toward me when I come out, to, out the door. And that was the way I was headed, because that was the way to the main road. Okay. But nothing looked familiar lost and fearing the police were up to no good steve hustled down a nearby street in search of shelter it seemed there was only one room available and i come to that porta potty I, I didn't want the law to see me walking at night i got in that porta potty and a million things on my mind but couldn't think of nothing as the temperature plunged into the teens the situation became desperate. So I took tissue and put it around the vent holes and, and around the door. And you couldn't lay your head on the right side. So, and I would try to lay my head on the left and, and on the door. And it was so cold, it, it would numb you. It would even numb you through tissue folded. And now I know that I'm gonna freeze to death. So I stood up and I said, God, if you won't let me die, I'll serve you. That night, Steve was strangely warm after years of pain, Carolyn Collett's prayers for her son were about to bear fruit. The next morning was when I knew for a fact that God had saved me. If anybody can get saved there, you, you, you can get saved. Returning to Clay County, Steve spent the next year memorizing scripture and learning how to live. He also struck up an unlikely friendship. I'd gotten uh, to start, sort of be close to a parole officer. It was uh, almost made for fiction. As a seasoned parole officer in Kentucky's 41st Judicial District, Doug Hopkins had a courtside seat to Steve's tenuous past. Court calls case CR31541, Commonwealth versus Steve Cobb. What stood out was the young convict's unflinching sense of accountability. I remember it like it was yesterday. Steve appeared in court. He was in shackles. And I remember him standing in front of the judge. He uh, admitted his crime, and he was ready to do the time. Several months after Steve's release from the Laurel County Detention Center, his spiritual progress was the talk of the town. 
people in, my, in, the, in the community, they gave me six months. They had bets on me. And nine or six months, they gave me extension. Then, bad news. The old warrants from Tennessee had resurfaced. Doug advised Steve to head south and face the music. But he also sent a letter to the local district attorney with details of Steve's transformation. We know that when we go to Tennessee, it's over. And I know I'm going to Brushy Mountain State Prison. As the hearing began, the district attorney rose to his feet. My heart skipped a beat when he spoke because when the DA speaks, it's not nothing for you at all, ever. Unless, of course, God has been at work. To Steve's utter amazement, the DA began to praise the Collett's changed lives and then urged the judge to drop all charges. Within the hour, Steve left Tennessee a free man. So we turn and we go back out of there and we come back to Kentucky. It was just like God said, how small do you think I am? When you think there is no value in a person or no worth in a person, then you need to step back and look at Steve Collin. To see Steve's life today is just amazing. To watch him pray with other guys that's in this place. He's probably been uh, responsible for leading more people to Christ than any preacher in this county. We baptize prisoners till I'm wore out sometimes. So how far has Steve Collett come? The answer to that question is perhaps best read on the faces of those who once knew Clay County's notorious bad boy. Their mouth hits the ground like. It's like taking a grizzly bear and, and turning it into a good preacher. Very few, very few make it that come from that despair and, and that far removed from the main street. What's the difference in who I was then and who I am now? Only Jesus. A similar tale could be told about Leslie, who after 25 brutal years on the run, finally collapsed into the arms of Jesus. I don't even like to think of myself the way I used to be. I don't. I was a horrible person.